is a spider on my window with a gigantic spider web. This is budget for later. So today is hopefully going to be a quick video. I want to talk about six quick and easy things that I've personally done in order to immediately start saving money. Some of them are instantly and some of them you'll see results in a couple of days to maybe two weeks. But it's not something that requires any money on your part outside of what you already have. So the first and most obvious is budgeting for things. So budgeting your personal money, budgeting for groceries, budgeting for gas, budgeting for your Metro card, really knowing what you need and, and having money aside for that. Because I find that when you don't budget, you spend all willy nilly. You go and you buy the coffee and then you buy the sandwich and then later you buy this and then later you buy that. But if you say, hey, I have my personal money that's $40 for the week. I need to spend it um, smartly. I'm going to make breakfast at home and I'm going to take lunch to work. And don't get me wrong, I understand that a lot of times it's easier said than, said than done based on time, based on resources. All the pets are out right now, the two cats and the dog, and I have my dog sitting right by my leg and another cat is like sniffing around the tripod, like what's going on here? Anyway. So I understand that it's easier said than done. And obviously this list is something that you can pick and choose whatever works for you. The one thing, the main thing that has helped me with my budgeting journey and with keeping to my budget is to not swipe my card. I do not swipe my card unless necessary. There are a couple of restaurants or like places in New York that does not accept cash, which is so weird to me. So. I think Sweet Green used to be one of those restaurants where they still they still have the no cash policy, especially during the pandemic, but even before the pandemic, they did not accept cash, and so we would have to swipe a card. But other than those like rare occurrences, I try to use cash now for everything because that means that I'm taking out of my budgeted money and not dipping into money in my account and then kind of putting my accounts in this weird like jumbled mess that I cannot understand and also I'm spending too much money because I'm taking money from places that I should not be. The third thing is to cancel your unwanted subscription. So when I first started this budgeting journey, I went on my account and I looked through my my um, my statements and I looked at, you know, you can print out your statements online and it's nice to print out your statements, get a highlighter and highlight all these charges that, why am I spending, why am I paying for this through Apple when I don't even use it? And that's what I experienced. Like I think I canceled two or three things that I had. One of them was like a $50 um, membership for Coursera, which is a great website, but I wasn't doing anything with the class that I was paying $50 a month for. So I immediately canceled it. There was another thing on um, Apple for $4.99 that I was not, oh, Apple Music. I have Spotify and I have Apple Music. I'm like, why do I have two streaming services? So I canceled Apple Music. So yes, go through your statement, cancel your subscriptions. In that vein, share your subscriptions. Now, I am not telling you to share your subscriptions that where you're not allowed to publicly, okay? Please pick up what I'm putting down. What I am telling you though is that there are certain subscriptions that you are allowed to share under certain circumstances. One of those circumstances is when you live with a person. So I live with my roommate and we share an Amazon Prime. And you might be saying, well, what if I have a roommate that I don't really want them to see what I'm buying, what I'm interested in, so on and so forth. Well, Amazon has a system set up where you can have your own pro profile under the same Prime membership. So you can have, I don't know how many they allow, but you, you have your own login, you have your own page. You ne I never see what's going on on her side of that Prime. We have our own login, we have our own subscription. So I have a Kindle Unlimited and she has a Kindle Unlimited. We both have to pay for those separately because we have our own profile. 
but it all falls under her Prime account. And then I share with her my Netflix, my Hulu subscription. I think there's another subscription that I share with her. And it works out where I'm saving money on an Amazon Prime membership and she's paying, saving money on those things. So share your subscriptions where you can. On top of that, if you have a student email, if you're a student and you have a student email, use your student emails use them i get so many discounts by using my student email spotify is one of them apple music is one of them i think disney plus has um a thing where you can pay less if you're a student i think also prime allows you to pay less if you're a student use your student email to sign up for things you can save so much money that way i think apple music is like a 9.99 versus a 4.99 difference so that's five dollars difference a month that you can save by using your student email <laughs> This next one is so funny to me because this continues to happen to me. Take a closer look at your accounts. Again, please take a closer look at your accounts because you will be spending money that you do not need to. The most obvious is look at your bills and see what you don't need, like your phone bills. Look at your phone bill. If you have cable, I don't, <laughs> we don't need it. But if you have cable, look at your cable bills. Look at all those things. You don't, there's like hair flying because I was just petting my dog. Look at all those things that you do not need and take them off of your bill. You might not need a sports package, but you have a sports package that you could be saving on. You might not need the triple hole internet, TV, and landline because you don't use your landline. Get rid of it. So look at it and take things off. But what I experienced was more along the lines of just things that I was blatantly paying for that I had no idea I was paying for. For example, I have life insurance. I have life insurance through State Farm. I was on this, I'm trying to switch over all my accounts to um, my Capital One um, checking account so that Bank of America is the one that I mainly use and I don't want it to have bill money in it because it's just so confusing. So I'm trying to separate things so everybody, everything has a place. Kind of like how you stay clean and organized in your home if everything has a place. This is the same thing where I'm treating my bank accounts like everything has a place. Capital One Bank is for my billing. Bank of America is for my like moving around money and swiping if I need to swipe. And then Alley Bank is for my savings. So I went on State Farm and I realized I was still paying for renter's insurance. I was paying, I think, like 30 something a month total for renter's insurance and life insurance. The renter's insurance was like $14 a month. I have not lived in my old apartment since December 2020. I had been paying for renter's insurance for 11 months for a place I wasn't living in. And we had renter's insurance for this place through my best friend. Another thing that I found just this weekend is I went again, I went on Ellie's um, pet insurance. I went on her insurance and I was going to change the card again, what that they were being, that, that they were charging. And I noticed that it had my address from two apartments ago, my address from Manhattan. So I didn't think much of it. I was like, oh, I thought I'd change it to the old Brooklyn apartment, but I didn't think much of it. I'm like, I'm gonna change it. This thing popped up and was like, oh, you saved $12.39. It will apply to your next bill. Her insurance went from like $48 to to $35. I have not lived in my Manhattan apartment since February of 2019. I've been paying an extra $12.39 a month for 20 months just because I did not change the address from the Manhattan apartment. And for to me, it's like, I know that this is true for car insurance. No idea that it had anything to do with pet insurance. My last suggestion, and I think it's a lot of, I haven't heard the suggestion before or even knew until recently when I was paying my card and looking closely at the interest rate on cards, but pay on your cards early. Pay on the first. And if you are someone who is doing the snowball method and you're saving, say you're like, I have a debt payoff um, envelope and it's whatever extra money that I have after I do my sinking funds goes into that. So sometimes I'll have $60, sometimes I'll have 30, and I'll wait until the end of the month when I'm paying my minimum payment to then add that to it. And when I did this, I calculated what the interest rate was gonna be for the next month. And when the 1st of October happened, the interest rate was higher. And I was like, why is it higher? That's weird. 
And I took a closer look on it and the interest rate is charged on a daily basis. So it's based on your daily total, the average of your daily amount. So say I owe $270 and in the first scenario, I, ha I owe $270 and I owe this for say 27 or 28, I can't remember how I did it in my head, but say 27 or 28 days of the 30 day period, I owe $270 and then on the 28th I pay or the 27th I pay $200, I pay $40. So now it's down to $230. Well, the total amount, if you add it up per day and then you average it, ends up being $267.33. And based on that average, I have now gained an interest of $5.05. Now let's change that. Say I owe $270 and on the third day I pay $20 and now I owe $250. And then on the fourth or fifth day, I paid another $20, totaling $40, and now I owe $230 for the next remaining days, say 20, 24, 23 days, I now owe $230. Well, that average out averages out to be $232. Based on the calculation, my interest is now $4.38. That's a 67 cents difference. Now, that's not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but when you're talking about thousands, there was a time when I had a credit card where I owed 10,000 on. So imagine if I was paying earlier in the month and then it was being charged in that way, I would less interest would be added at the end of the month. So pay your cards if you can the first of the month and then as you get more money in that you can put extra towards your card, pay it as you get it. Do not wait until the end to put this large sum. It's so cathartic, right? It's so nice to be able to be like I'm putting $300 on it on this day, as opposed to I'm putting 50 here, I'm putting 100 here, I'm putting 70 here. It doesn't feel as good, but it feels as good when you save more on your interest that's being added. So um, I'm going to make a separate video more on how to calculate your interest and how that works on a day, if they charge by the day or if they charge by the month. Hello, here you go. Um, but that's it for now. I hope this was helpful. Please tell me ways that you have saved in a quick and easy way that does takes very little effort beyond like going on your phone or your computer and doing something or changing small habits in your everyday life in order to save money. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.